custody. More now in federal politics and the government's shake-up of media ownership laws, among other things. And joining us in the studio is the Communications Minister, Mitch Fifield. Uh, thanks very much for your time, Senator. Good to be here, Paul. Now, uh, before I ask you about media reform, just want to talk about these crossbenches and negotiations um, with a double dissolution looking even more likely on July 2. Uh, John Madigan was on the program just a short time ago. Totally has uh, ruled out anything short of a national ICAC. Does that mean with Senators uh, Madigan, Lazarus and Lambie um, ruling out any further negotiations that July 2 is a lock? Look. We would love to get the ABCC legislation through the parliament. That's our objective. We uh, took the proposition of re-establishing uh, the Building and Construction Commission to the last election because it's important to have a cop on the beat. It's important to have the rule of law on building sites. It's important to make sure uh, that we have a productive building sector. Uh, so nothing could, could have been clearer at the last election. Um, we've made it clear uh, that uh, we want the Parliament to have the opportunity to address this. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Labor have been filibustering a lot of bills in the Senate, so uh, we've uh, recalled the Parliament uh, so that they can uh, address this issue in the Senate uh, once uh, and for all. Um, and uh, obviously, uh, we don't have the numbers in our own right in the Senate. If this is to get through, uh, we need six out of the eight crossbenchers, uh, and I hope uh, that the, that the uh, crossbench senators will respect the fact that we're dealing with them in good faith. Um, uh, we will entertain amendments, but uh, they can't be amendments that fundamentally weaken the ABCC, uh, that uh, undermine its intent, uh, or that go fundamentally beyond what the purpose of the ABCC is. The game is over, though, now, if, if you can't get uh, one of those three that I mentioned. So, so we will be heading to a double dissolution. Well, there are eight crossbench senators, um, and uh, you need one of those, though, don't you? That's, well, that's the numbers. We, we, we need we need six six of the eight uh, yeah. in in whatever in whatever combination, uh, and if a crossbench senator uh, has a proposition that they want to put forward by way of an amendment, uh, then obviously uh, they would need to be able to indicate uh, that they had the support of uh, five of their colleagues. Um, otherwise, uh, it wouldn't be a proposition uh, that we could consider. Uh, we need the ABCC. Uh, we're giving uh, the Senate the opportunity. Uh, to, uh, to give it the thumbs up. Uh, if the Senate doesn't give it the thumbs up, then there is a constitutional mechanism uh, for this impasse to be broken. And uh, you say you're negotiating in good faith. Um, Senator Madigan has repeated what um, Senator Lazarus has told us, that um, no one from the Prime Minister's office has visited uh, at least in a month, and in um, John Madigan's case, a couple of months. Um, what do you make of uh, the Prime Minister's uh, subcontracting, as it were, uh, Bob Day to, uh, to bring in the bring in the votes. Look, is, is, that, is that serious? Look, Michaelia Cash uh, you know, has, has been in uh, constant contact uh, with the crossbench. Uh, this is her portfolio. Uh, she's the lead in this area. But look, I think that the Prime Minister in relation to Bob Day was uh, simply uh, making a couple of uh, obvious points. One is uh, that Bob has spent a lifetime uh, in the building sector, um, building homes, employing people. Uh, he understands what's required in this sector. Uh, and the PM was simply pointing out that Bob gets it uh, and that Bob, therefore, could be a good resource for his crossbench bench colleagues mm. uh, and that as Bob supports this legislation uh, then um, it'd be great uh, if Bob could talk to his colleagues uh, and could persuade them of the merits of this legislation. Uh, we hope the crossbench uh, see the merits of the legislation that we're putting forward, uh, but ultimately, um, if they don't, uh, there is a mechanism to address the impasse. But our clear preference is uh, that the legislation is passed. From, from what I can tell, um, uh, all of those crossbenchers see the merit in a corruption watchdog, but they say it should be broader, it should be a national ICAC style. Uh, what's wrong with that? Well, look, that, that's a separate issue. Uh, you know, you, there, there could be arguments for, there could be arguments against. Uh, what's wrong with it, though? Do you like well, that idea? Well, look, it's up to anyone uh, to make, make the case if they think there should be other uh, law enforcement or anti-corruption bodies, but that's a separate issue. Uh, we have a proposition before the Parliament, which is for an Australian Building and Construction Commission. Uh, that should be looked at on its merits. If colleagues want to debate the merits or otherwise of another body, well, that's a separate issue. I also asked um, uh, John Madigan this morning whether or not uh, the style of the government has changed since the Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull took over. He said uh, not markedly was, was his... Um was his comment on that. Uh, what would you like to see uh, Tony Abbott's role be during the election campaign? Look, Tony Abbott has uh, indicated that he wants to continue as uh, the member for Warringah, mm. uh, so uh, he'll be putting himself uh, forward uh, to his constituents. Would you like uh, to see him go broader, further afield and, and, and travel around to different electorates, as, uh, as he said he's open to do? Look, all, all colleagues uh, seek to make 
the contribution that uh, they think uh, can help uh, the government to be re-elected uh, and I'd expect that uh, uh, Tony Abbott uh, would do what every backbencher does, uh, look for opportunities to make a contribution. Not every backbencher would go around Australia though and visit other electorates. Well, look, it's, uh, it's up to each individual uh, how they think they can best make a contribution. Would it improve your chances of re-election? Well, every member of the team uh, needs to be focused on uh, the message uh, that we have, uh, which is that uh, we are the best uh, party, we are the best two parties, Liberal and National, in coalition uh, to address the issue of a transitioning economy. Let's talk about media reform. You're going to be doing a, uh, uh, giving a speech today at the Melbourne Press Club. Nothing new to reveal in, uh, in any uh, proposed media reforms. Um, you did outline what you, you planned to do some weeks ago. Yeah, well, we want to get rid of uh, what's known as the 75% the audience reach rule and uh, the two out of three rule. Uh, they're rules that wouldn't mean a, a lot to, uh, to most people who uh, tune into uh, various uh, sources of media. Uh, but uh, what those particular rules do is uh, constrain media organisations from configuring themselves in the way that best suits them. Uh, these two rules don't recognise the fact that the internet exists. Uh, they were crafted uh, in an analogue era for an analogue era. So uh, this is something that we want to get through the parliament. Uh, the opposition have indicated that uh, they'll support the repeal of the 75% audience reach rule. Uh, they have an open mind on the two out of three rule uh, and uh, I would encourage them uh, to see this as a package uh, and to support it. And what's the timing of that now? Um, are you going to be crunched by an early election? Well, uh, we don't yet know um, when the election will be, uh, but uh, the legislation going, has going been... Going on July 2, what's, what's the media reform schedule? Well, look, I'd, I'd take things one day at a time. As, uh, as both a minister and as manager of government business in the Senate, uh, the legislation has been referred by the Senate to uh, its communications committee uh, and it will be reporting back in the week of the 12th of May. What's been the reaction uh, privately um, to your decision not to touch the anti-siphoning uh, rules for now? That is um, protecting uh, the viewers' right to watch a lot of sport on free-to-air. Well, I mean, I know you're a huge sports fan, Paul, uh, and Australians, uh, I think, understandably, uh, want a degree of comfort that the events that they uh, know and love uh, will be available uh, free to wear. Uh, while the anti-siphoning list is not an absolute guarantee, uh, it does provide a degree of comfort. Uh, we're not uh, putting forward uh, in this package of reforms changes to that. I think if there were to be changes in the future, uh, there would need to be, a, I think, a better... Um, community understanding of what the anti-siphoning list does and doesn't do, but also uh, there'd need to be uh, broad parliamentary support and uh, those conditions aren't there. A whole bunch of sport lovers in, uh, in Parliament as well. Um, and just finally, uh, not to be self-interested, but uh, ABC cuts. Um, I suspect you watched our uh, outgoing boss um, give an interview a couple of days ago saying that um, if there were to be further cuts to the ABC, then then jobs would be lost in the area of um, maybe, um, well, certainly in, uh, in news journalism, but maybe in the regions as well. Is that just part of the negotiations that you, uh, you, you take his comments aboard? Well, I, I always uh, take a, a close look at uh, the, the comments of, of Mark Scott, and uh, we should acknowledge uh, he's coming up to the end of uh, 10 years. Uh, of contribution as head of the organisation. Uh, but we are approaching uh, the next uh, triennium funding agreement. Uh, that will be looked at in the context of the budget. So I, I can't uh, give you an idea of the dollars themselves, but I can provide the reassurance that uh, the government will make sure uh, that the ABC is well resourced to, to do uh, the job that it does. We'll wait and see what you come up with. Thank you very much, Thanks, Senator Fifield. Uh, now, uh, 